today on Inspiration for the Day. Nothing (laughs) that they can say can separate me from the love of my Father God. Hallelujah, because I already know He's already shown and demonstrated His love for me. If He never does anything else for me, He's already done enough. When He went to an old rugged cross and He bled there and He died for my sins, He did it all for me right there on that cross. Don't you love the Lord today? You know, love is a response in our heart because God first loved us. And in Romans chapter 8 and verses 38 and 39, the Apostle Paul said, For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Can I get an amen for that word? Amen. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, when God speaks about love, God's love language is manifested through his giving. We know for God so loved the world, right? That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not what? But instead have everlasting life. That's God's love language, amen? God is a God of love who loves to give, who loves to pour into your life good things. God created you and formed you and fashioned you in your mother's womb. God saw you before you were ever born. He knew what you would be. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us in the heavenly realms in Christ, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world. So he chose you before you were ever born. So he formed and fashioned you in his image. Now, God, being a creative God, chose to show us that he wanted a loving family. And in fact, we know the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit have always been in relationship one with the other. That's why it's important for us to understand that Jesus has always been. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were created by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the what? Light of men. So we see that God created us in love. And in fact, God gave us 
a type of parable in showing us that when men, a man meets a woman and they fall in love and they then conceive a child, that that child is conceived in love. That's the way God designed it. So that a child is conceived with two people who are bound together who then bring a child into the world. Can you believe it? When, if you've had a child, you think about how you can't hardly believe what God has done. Stevie Wonder said, I can't believe what God has done. Through us, he's given life to one. Isn't she lovely? Amen. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, y'all might get some Stevie this morning now. <laughs> Amen. I like Stevie. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you see, God brings two together. And it can also be a little boy that's lovely, too. Can I get an amen from the brothers? How about the sisters? <laughs> Them little boys are cute, too. Amen. You might have to do their hair a little bit, and you might have to work on them a little bit more. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. God brings about a child, and he wants the child to be born in a loving atmosphere. Uh, an atmosphere of relationship where there's two people that are bound together and that love connection helps that child to grow up in a home where the child is nurtured, where the child is loved on, hallelujah, where you begin to talk in that real high pitch, you know. You know how it is when you get around a baby, your voice changes. I used to kid Debbie about it until I had children. Now she kids me about it. Amen. Talk to them in that real, they like that high voice. And you know, you think about it, you love to hear their voice. And God loves to hear your voice. Amen. You see, he said nothing can separate you from his love. Oh, praise the Lord. Fallen angels can't separate you from his love. Because sometimes the fallen angels have come and they said God doesn't love you. Sometimes they've come and they've said, if God really loved you, you wouldn't be going through this. Oh, yeah. Sometimes they come and they try to create doubt in your mind. But nothing <laughs> that they can say can separate me from the love of my Father God. Hallelujah. Because I've already know he's already shown and demonstrated his love for me. If he never does anything else for me, he's already done enough. When he went to an old rugged cross and he bled there and he died for my sins, he did it all for me right there on that cross. When he said it is finished. He endured separation from his father for just a moment. And that's when my sins were put upon the Lord Jesus. And then the father looked away just for a moment. He was separated from the father for one moment so that I could live with the father for all eternity. He said, I'll do it. He said, I will allow this perfect relationship where there has only been union and agreement for all eternity, for one moment to change. And that's when he said, Eli, Eli, lasabachtami. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You see, God is a loving father, but he can't look upon your sin. So he said, Jesus, blood would wash away every sin. Oh, yeah. Woo! I said, Jesus, blood washes every sin oh it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows through the lowest valley hallelujah how many of you know that your sins have been washed away and thrown into the sea of forgetfulness that's how much God loves you God loves you enough to forgive you of everything wrong that you've ever done in your life so that you never have to feel guilt about it again whoa did you catch that Amen. I never have to feel guilty again because he paid the price oh, yeah. for my sin. So I don't walk around in guilt about something I did yesterday. If the devil reminds me of my past, I just remind him of his future. Amen. I just say, you know where you're going. Amen. You can go on to get there. Amen. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because my sins have been washed away. And you see, my faith in his ability to wash away my sins helps me not to feel any guilt for my sins. Uh -huh. Now, if I go out today and I sin, well, I'm going to feel guilt until I ask the Lord to forgive me. Yes, Amen. Even though his blood is covering me all the time, yes. still, I don't want to do anything that is going to... to cause my relationship with God to be in a place that it, where I'm not pleasing the Father. Because he said, if you therefore being evil or natural know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does your Father in heaven know how to give good gifts to them that ask? How much more does he want to bless your life? If we want to bless our children's life, how much more? So he doesn't want me to live in my past. How many of you know Paul said, forgetting the things that are behind me, I press on towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You say, yes, God, I, I believe you can forgive me of my sins, but I can't forgive myself. Well, you know, that's nonproductive thinking. Amen. If God can forgive you, you can forgive yourself. He gives you the freedom to forgive yourself. Amen. So when I understand how much God loves me, it helps me to also forgive myself. Yeah. Amen. Because I I'm, I'm know that I am complete in him. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Aren't you glad today that you are in Christ? That means you're in the vine. That means you're drawing life from the vine. The vine sustains you. The vine gives you strength. The vine gives you life. So today I'm walking in the life of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not letting the devil pull me down and bring up my past. Because he's the, the Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. But he says, Christ is he who sits at the right hand of the Father and who makes intercession for you. And says, wait a minute, Satan. He's mine. She's mine. I bought her. I bought her. Her sins have been paid for. Your sins have been paid for. Amen, Brian. Praise God because God reached down and God gave it all. He gave you his son. He gave you the best thing. If he had given you gold, he could make more gold. If he had given you diamonds. I know y'all ladies would have liked that. Amen. But he can make more diamonds. Uh -huh. Amen. But he gave us the one he was in relationship with, his son. See, relationship is what it's about. It's not about what denomination you're a part of today. It's not about all of the doctrine, even though doctrine's important. But that's not what is going to get you into heaven. It's a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That is the door that gets you into heaven. Hallelujah. That is the way. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. I'm the one who is able to open up the relationship with God. You see, I talk to him, don't you? I've got a relationship with him. I talk to him in the mornings. I talk him in, it to him in the afternoons. I talk to him when I'm talking to people. When I'm talking to you, many times I'm also talking to him. You say, how can you do that? There's a three-way conversation going on. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, praise God. So when I'm, I'm listening to you and then I'm also listening to what the Lord wants to say, hallelujah, because I'm tuned in to the Lord. Amen. You see, the Lord is moving and he's communicating. But the question is, are you tuned in? The only way that people are going to know the love of God is by seeing the love of God expressed through you. Yes. Oh, yes. You see, we can understand conceptually who God is, right? Mm. We have a concept, but it's kind of an abstract concept. But when God puts somebody in your life that manifests that love. Oh, yes. Amen. You see, God wants to put his arms around you. And so sometimes he uses a person to put their arms around you. Amen. God knows what he wants to do. There's times somebody comes up for prayer and I just take my arms and put them around them. If that's what I feel like God's telling me to do, I just do it the way God says do it. Because I understand that he knows what he's doing.
and that I need to listen to his spirit because his spirit wants to manifest his love. Hallelujah. And sometimes I might have to get out of the way because sometimes I might want to do things my way, but God says, now, let me show you how to do it my way. Amen. How many of you know it's better if you do it God's way? Hallelujah. If you do it God's way, then God things begin to happen. Hallelujah. Then God begins to accomplish his mission and his purpose in somebody's life. And as he's working in their life, he's working in your life too. Amen. That's what I love about the Lord. You see, when, when I see him operating in your life, it just blesses my socks off. I got to check and see, are they still on? Well, they're on, but they, that's how I feel. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus is good, isn't he? Oh, isn't he a great Savior? Aren't you glad that you can relate to Jesus? God wanted you to be able to relate to him, and the only way he could was his son putting on flesh. That's the only way I could truly understand God is through looking at Jesus. And Jesus said, when you've seen me, You've seen the Father, for I and the Father are one. So if you want to know what God is like, just look at Jesus. See, he is the full revelation. In the past, God spoke to us through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son. His son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being. So if you want to know how God feels about something, look at how Jesus handled people. Everybody in town hated Zacchaeus because he was taking up the taxes, remember? But Jesus looks up in that sycamore tree and says, Zacchaeus, I'm going home with you. Amen. He said, I don't care what other people think. I want to show you what God thinks about you. God wants you to sit down with me so that he can reveal himself to you. You see, the woman that was caught in adultery, the people wanted to stone her, right? They wanted to catch Jesus in the trap because they knew Jesus was preaching forgiveness. And so they said, now we're going to take this woman up to him and we're going to see what he says. And they thought he's going to say, well, forgive her. And then they were going to say, okay, now we'll stone you. Because you're disobeying the law of Moses. And so they bring her up. So Jesus didn't say forgive her, did he? He didn't say it in those words. But he did say it in spirit. Because when they came up with all of their accusations, just like the devil comes against you sometimes, Jesus started writing down in the sand. I think it gave him a moment to ponder. And as he was writing in the sand, he must have taken some time. You know, the gospel points this out about him writing in the sand. What was he writing? He knew all about them. Then he says, you want a stoner? He that's without sin, you cast the first stone. He said, that's what God thinks about her. God wants to build her life. God wants to restore her life. God wants to take her life and manifest his forgiveness in her life and then wants to, her to learn her lesson and go and sin no more so that she understands that God loves her. And you know what? All of the people, they all the rocks hit the ground. She heard those rocks hitting the ground. She's trembling on the ground. And Jesus said, where are your accusers? There are none, Lord. They had no right to condemn her. Now, Jesus never sinned, so he could have. He could have said, well, I condemn you because I've not sinned. But he said, neither do I condemn you. Oh, praise God. I said, praise God. Have you heard him tell you that? Neither do I condemn you and me. He's, he's telling me that this morning. 
Now I've heard the voice of the Lord. So, you know, I, I, I can just see her body as she was trembling. And when Jesus said that, the peace blew into her spirit. I mean, she was about to face death by stoning. They had the stones in their hands. They were serious. But how many of you know God says, I want you to experience forgiveness in your life this day. And I want you to know that God, your Father God, sent me from heaven down to meet you at this place, at this moment, at this time. And right now, you're made completely whole. You know, many times Jesus would say, be whole. Because he saw the brokenness. He saw the areas that people needed the love of Christ to come in and to mend their life. You know, I think about today how many people have gone through things in their life. And those things can begin to bother you. You can begin to let them into your mind. But when they try to get into your mind, just say the love of Jesus fills my soul. The love of Jesus floods my soul. And let the love of Jesus come in and mend your soul. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what happened to you in the past because Jesus, he gives you a future, doesn't he? He said, I came to give you a future of hope and blessing. Hallelujah. Today, you can rejoice because God so loved the world. God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. That's why Paul could say, nothing can separate me. Height nor depth. He said, I don't care how high you go, the love of Christ is higher. How many of you know, no matter how low you go, the love of Christ is deeper. Hallelujah. He says, it doesn't matter what has happened in your past that the love of Christ can take care of it. Aren't you glad today that you know the love of Christ, Jesus your Lord? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that love wins? Love wins. Love wins over hate. Love wins over evil. There's still some evil in this world, but I got news for you. Love is going to win. Hallelujah. Love conquers all. God conceived you in love. God sustains you with his love. He empowers you with his love. Amen. His love surrounds you. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, that's, I, I tell you what, that's why when you see the story of the prodigal son, where the prodigal son has gone away and, and he's, he's, and he's left his father, he's left his family and he's just written them off until he gets in a situation of need. He finds himself in the pig's pen. And now all at once, he says, well, my dad's servants have got it better than I do. So he said, I think it's time to go home. And as he starts on his journey, he sees his father at a distance. And the father didn't tell him about what a bad son he'd been. Instead, he said, come on, son. And he took his arms and he wrapped them around him. Oh, I tell you what. That's the love of God. That's, I said, that's the love of the Father, God, who loves you. And he doesn't say, okay, I know you're past. And he doesn't say, I'm going to accuse you. He says, I'm going to receive you. And what does he do? He said, we're going to get the biggest steak we can find. Oh, a big, thick one. And he said, I'm going to put my ring on your finger signifies your mind. How many of you know you're sealed with the Holy Spirit and it says you're God's. Hallelujah. Today the Spirit of God within you says you are God's. Hallelujah. No man can take it away from you. They could take away your house if you don't make your payment. Oh, but they can't take away the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against you will prosper. You've got God's love in your heart. It doesn't matter if you're a prisoner of war in a dungeon somewhere. They got you and you have the love of Jesus. Hope springs eternal. Because, you see, he says, life nor death, because the love of God transcends time. 
It transcends all time. So I'm right now abiding in that love. I'm abiding in that. Oh, praise the Lord. You see, and when I'm going throughout the day, I just remind myself sometimes I'm abiding in that love. I'm abiding in your love. Oh, praise the Lord. And you just begin to meditate upon that. And, and you just, when you're in the middle of a traffic jam and, and you're all frustrated. Because uh -huh. nobody knows how to drive on that road but you. Then you just remind yourself, I'm abiding in the love of God. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the love of God is greater far, amen, than anything. And when you remember that, you're going to find strength. You're going to find power. You're going to find that the God who created you. Now, I want you to think about the odds of you coming into this world. God said, I'm going to cause a chain reaction. Hallelujah. And you are going to be the result. Boy, God's got a sense of humor. Amen. You can't tell me God ain't got a sense of humor when you look in the mirror. Amen. <laughs> oh, I'm glad he gave us the joy of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, the scripture tells us. So see, God, he, he, you know, even when, when we laugh, it pleases him. Think about how it makes you feel when, if you have children, when you hear them laugh. Or somebody you love, you hear them laugh. Doesn't it make you feel good? Thank you, God, for creating us in your image. Thank you, God, that nothing can separate me from your love. That we are bound together with cords that cannot be broken. They're the cords of God's eternal love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, I'm so glad I get the whole picture because some people say, they'll, they'll, they're, it's okay to talk about God, but don't talk about Jesus. But the love of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that's the only way to truly know the depth and the height and the love of Christ is to know that God gave him for you. Let's stand. Hi, I'm Pastor Phil. I'm so glad you were able to be with us for this morning service. You know, as you heard the word of God today, I believe the Holy Spirit has spoken to your heart. He knows exactly what you need in your life. And so this day, I want you just to receive that living word and apply it to your life and let the healing presence of Jesus flow into your very being. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth us. And so today, let's receive that healing flow and ministry into our life, spiritually, emotionally, physically, whatever you need today, we're in prayer for you that God will meet your needs.